in the United States, no city was perhaps watched more carefully in the early days of the pandemic than New York City itself. The world followed along as cases spiked nearly overnight and the city shut down, resulting in empty streets and vacant storefronts in a city that normally never sleeps. I spoke with Frank Aldrin, GE Healthcare's Director of Service for Manhattan, about the challenges of supporting the front lines in this city and if he as a New Yorker had experienced anything like this in his life before. This is what he had to say. Firstly, I just, I just want to know who you are, uh, Frank. I'm with GE Healthcare for 25 years for the Manhattan service area. So the island of Manhattan is my area. I uh, lead a team of 35 engineers um, who repair, maintain, and install all of the high-end medical uh, imaging equipment within Manhattan. So MRIs, CTs, x-ray systems, ultrasound systems, vascular labs. Um, my team is the, the men and women who go out, install the equipment, and then make sure it's you know continually safe to use, do preventative maintenance on it and, and whatnot. You've been doing this job for 25 years, Frank. Um, have you seen anything like this when it comes to crisis response and the way that this, this COVID-19 pandemic is, uh, is really touching every corner of society? And I try and hold it together here, Mickey, Mikey, but uh, yeah, 9-11. It, uh, it's, it, it's very reminiscent of 9-11, but it's almost, it's, it's kind of worse in a sense um, because we can see it coming. You know, 9-11, nobody saw it coming. So there was nothing you could do to prepare for what happened in the wake of 9-11. But, you know, when you, when you talk about this, it's like we know it was coming um, and we're trying to prepare as much as possible. And it, it's, look, we're good, right? This team eats crisis for breakfast. You know, we, it's, it's our first pandemic, but it's not our first crisis. Um, we've been through Hurricane Sandy together. There were a riot here and there we've gone through. So we're going to get through this, I, you know, and it's no different. It's, it's everything that we've learned. It's keeping the team safe, keeping everyone motivated, maintaining everyone's safety is the number one priority. We're all tasked with that. When it doesn't look right, we stop. We take and we reevaluate the situation. Our teams are trained to do that. Um, we deal with bloodborne pathogens every day. Every year we take training. We deal with better, or with worse, in my opinion, bloodborne pathogens in the city all the time, like MRSA. You're adopting some special procedures for the movement of your personnel across Manhattan now because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Can you just briefly yeah. explain what they are? So the way I normally deploy the, the, the team is everyone shows up in the city. And then we deploy outwardly from the city because if you look at the corner of York and First Avenue, you can throw a rock to any one of my major facilities. So normally that's the way we deploy. But given everything that's going on in the city, I, I immediately, we, 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 about three weeks ago, I said no more. Um, you know, we have to protect ourselves. So I reached out to all the major com you know, customers and said, look, our response time may be inhibited. Turns out it's not because there's no traffic. So now you can do. 30 minutes into 30 miles. It's, a, it's insane. So we have the folks working out of their house and coming in individually, cleaning the tools on site. We were able to, uh, hand sanitizer is non-existent unless, you, you know, it's just non-existent. So one of my staff, a gentleman by the name of Mike Pinterex, great guy, service program manager. He works for me from Mount Sinai. He was able to secure a distillery in Brooklyn to manufacture hand sanitizer for us. So we, we bought just a tremendous amount of this hand sanitizer. It's not your typical hand sanitizer. It's not gel. It's more of an alcohol base. It's, it's in spray bottles. So we were able to distribute cases of this, this spray bottle and, you know, um, uh, disinfectant so that the team can use that on their tools and on their shoes and on their pants and on their jackets. And just when they come home, our new running rules is, you know, you, before you get in the car, you got to spray your car down. Bring your handles because in Manhattan, pe 10 people park your car. You don't even know who's in your car half the time. So when you park it in the garage, that's, that's a real threat. So we had, we learned and we adapted and we, we now spray the cars with the sanitizer. We spray the steering wheels, the doorknobs, the spray, the, the gear shifter and the tools. Um, and we then, we have all set up washing stations or home workstations. So when you walk into the front of your house, you're taking your shoes off, you're bagging them up, you're taking as much clothes off as you possibly can, bagging them up, you're putting them directly into the, 
into the laundry and washing them, and then you're going into the shower. So if you can imagine 35 people all coming home at different times during their day and having to go through this process before their wives and their kids will say hello to them, it's an interesting uh, new dynamic that we're faced with. For you personally, for your role, for this particular operation, what does success look like to you? Success is having all my people come home and have them all safe, have all their families safe. I want nobody to be infected. And I want our patients of New York to recover rapidly. And I want our response from GE Healthcare to be overwhelming. Fantastic stuff. Be safe. Stay safe, man. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.